in this video we are going to discuss about types of schedulers in operating system we know what is scheduling scheduling decides the order in which the processes are to be executed in a multi programming system we can have several processes in the main memory so when one process is waiting for some i o operation then cpu is idle so cpu control will be shifted to some other process so in that way we can utilize the efficiency of the cpu in effective manner with the help of the scheduling mainly there are three three types of schedulers are available the first one is long term scheduler which can also be called as job scheduler second one is short term scheduler which can also be called as cpu scheduler third one is medium term scheduler in this video we are going to discuss about these three schedulers first let's see the first one long term scheduler or job scheduler long term scheduler loads process from secondary memory to the main memory why because we know that cpu can executes a process if it resides in main memory only so the long term scheduler loads the corresponding processes from secondary memory to the main memory in secondary memory we have a queue called job queue job queue contains list of processes in the systems job queue contains list of all the processes which are in the system let a system contains 100 processes then job queue contains all the 100 processes so where job queue resides job queue resides in secondary memory such as hard disk whereas in main memory we have a queue called ready queue ready queue contains list of processes which are ready for execution by the cpu so ready queue resides in main memory whereas job queue resides in secondary memory such as hard disk so the task of long term scheduler is it loads a process from secondary memory such as job queue to main memory such as ready queue now let's see the second one short term scheduler short term scheduler picks a process from the ready queue and the allocate cpu to that process so cpu starts execution of that process we know that a ready queue is present in the main memory ready queue contains list of processes that are ready for execution so here the short term scheduler selects a process from the ready queue and allocates cpu to that process so cpu starts executing that process what is the other name for short term scheduler cpu scheduler the major difference between long term scheduler and short term scheduler is degree of frequency so degree of frequency is the major difference between long term scheduler and short term scheduler so what is degree of frequency degree of frequency means which scheduler we are using more frequently and which scheduler we are using less frequently so coming to uh, to these schedulers we use as long term scheduler very very less frequently why because what is the task of long term scheduler long term scheduler loads a process from secondary memory to the main memory long term scheduler loads a process from job queue to the ready queue once loading is over then the task of long term scheduler is over whereas coming to the short term scheduler short term scheduler picks a process from the ready queue and allocate cpu to that process let us assume that uh, here the short term scheduler picks a process from ready queue such as short term scheduler allocated process p0 to the cpu here assumes that we are using round robin algorithm in round robin scheduling algorithm every process will be executed for particular time slice period let us assume that here the time slice period is 1 millisecond whereas we have to execute the process for 15 milliseconds in order to complete its execution so what is the burst time of this process 15 milliseconds whereas what is the time quantum for this process 1 milliseconds so cpu executes this process for 1 milliseconds so once 1 milliseconds time is over 
then the corresponding process will be transferred to some ready queue. So again after some time, CPU allocates, again, some, again after some time, operating system allocates CPU to P0. So now CPU execute the process for one more, one more milliseconds. So once that one milliseconds time is expired, then operating system transfers the process to the ready queue. After some time, operating system allocates CPU to the P0. So now CPU executes the process for one milliseconds. So how many, how, how much time it will take here? Here it will take, totally we need to shift the processes for 15 times. So operating system has to allocate CPU for this process 15 times. Why? Because we have to execute this process for 15 milliseconds. So here, see here operating system, that means short term scheduler. Here short term scheduler is, uh, needs to allocate CPU for this process 15 times. Here long term scheduler, short term scheduler, medium term scheduler, all are nothing but parts of operating system. Operating system has several functionalities like process management, memory management, I.O. management, file management, disk management. So here schedulers are nothing but some operating system programs only. Okay. So here what we are doing, long term scheduler is loading process P0 from hard disk to the main memory only once. Whereas short term scheduler is allocating CPU to process P0 15 times. So that means which scheduler we are using more frequently. We are using short term scheduler more more frequently. Whereas long term scheduler very very less frequently. And one more important point here is long term scheduler controls degree of multi-programming. Long term scheduler controls degree of multi-programming. We know what is degree of multi-programming. Degree of multi-programming means uh, how many number of programs we are loading from we are loading from hard disk to the main memory. So here long term scheduler is loading the processes from hard disk to the main memory. Here while placing the processes from hard disk into the main memory the long term scheduler has to select a process that contains CPU bounded instructions as well as IO bounded instructions. Mainly there are two types of processes are there. First process is CPU bounded process. What is the first process? CPU bounded process. Whereas the second type of process is IO bounded process. What is the second type of process? I.O. bounded process. CPU bounded process means CPU instructions are more whereas I.O. instructions are less. Whereas I.O. bounded process means I.O. instructions are more whereas CPU instructions are less. Let us assume that long term scheduler loads a CPU bounded process from hard disk into the main memory. Then what is the problem here? CPU bounded process means that process contains more CPU instructions. That process contains less I.O. instructions. That means we are not utilizing I.O. in effective manner. We have several I.O. devices but we are wasting those I.O. devices. We are utilizing only CPU. That is the problem here. Likewise, let us assume that operating system loads a process which has more I.O. into the main memory from the hard disk. Then what is the problem here? I.O. bounded process means it contains more I.O. instructions and less CPU instructions. So that means here we, here we are uh, utilizing only I.O. devices. We are not utilizing the CPU. So CPU is wasted now. So that's why while placing a process from hard disk into the main memory, long term scheduler has to select a process that contains combination of CPU bounded instructions as well as IO bounded instructions. If the process is not like that, then uh, uh, utilization of the CPU is very very less as well as utilization of IO devices are also very very less. So this is about what is long term scheduler and what is short term scheduler. 
Now let's see about what is medium term scheduler. Medium term scheduler is mainly useful while implementing swapping concept. So swapping means let the CPU is executing a process at that time it receives an interrupt signal from the operating system. So whenever CPU receives interrupt signal then CPU stops execution of that process. So that process that partially executed process will be swapped out into the secondary memory such as hard disk. That swapping should be done by medium term scheduler. Okay. And after some time that partially executed process from the hard disk will be moved to the ready queue. That process is known as swapping. So what is medium term scheduler? Medium term scheduler is mainly useful while implementing swapping. Let CPU is executing a process. At that time operating system sends an interrupt signal to the CPU. So CPU stops execution of that process. That partially executed process will be swapped to the hard disk. So that should be done by the medium term scheduler. So medium term scheduler swaps uh, a partially executed process from main memory to the secondary memory. Uh, that, pro that should be that swapping should be done by medium term scheduler and that process is known as swap out. After some time uh, a partially executed process from the secondary memory will be swapped into the main memory. That is nothing but ready queue. Okay. Uh, let's take an example so that we will get the perfect clarity. Here we have ready queue. Ready queue contains a list of processes which are ready for execution and short term scheduler allocates one of the process from ready queue to the CPU. Here while CPU is executing a process, let us assume that CPU receives an interrupt from the operating system. So CPU stops execution of that process. So that process will be swapped out into the hard disk. This swapping is done by medium term scheduler and this process is known as swap out. <coughs> so he, who will swap the program from main memory to the secondary memory? That swapping is done by medium term scheduler and this process is known as swapping. So after some time that partially executed process here we have partially executed swapped out process. So after some time. Uh, operating system swaps the process from secondary memory to the main memory that is ready queue and this process is known as swapping. So swapping means swapping a program from secondary memory to the ready queue such as main memory. Okay. Uh, here we have uh, some IO waiting queue. Let us assume that CPU is executing a process during that uh, uh, let process is requiring some IO operation. So here uh, CPU is uh, I will allow so CPU control will be shifted to some other process here the process is waiting for some IO operation so that process will be sent to the IO waiting queue or device queue so once that process has completed its IO operations then that process will be moved to the ready queue okay so this is about <coughs> medium term scheduler okay so medium term scheduler swaps a process from main memory to the secondary memory.